Welcome to the ISO Show, dispelling myths and sharing tips for success to improve your business with ISO standards with your host, Mel Blackmore. Hi, and welcome to the ISO Show. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm actually really excited about the announcement that I'm about to make on this podcast because it's a topic that I've been talking about for the last couple of years and that's something that I'm really passionate about which is helping businesses to achieve net zero. And at long last, finally, ISO 14068 part one is here. So this is the new ISO standard for businesses transitioning to net zero. And I heard that the final tweak to the standard was actually in the title, which is all about businesses transitioning to net zero. So it's not just about carbon neutrality. It's about that journey towards net zero. Now, I'm just going to be providing you with a brief update on the new standard in this podcast, but I am going to be providing a bit more of an insight into the 10 reasons for adopting, for using this standard to achieve carbon neutrality on that pathway to net zero. And then in the new year, we'll be talking about how to actually implement ISO 14068. Uh, Because for those of you that are not familiar, if you're just joining us for the very first time and listening to the ISO show, I'm the CEO of Blackmore, the consultancy firm that helps businesses to implement and achieve ISO standards and also the founder and CEO of Carbonology. So that's a sister company of Blackmore's and we specialize in the carbon standards. So that, that's why this is such um, an exciting opportunity for us as professions in this field that are passionate about raising standards and to help businesses to be able to demonstrate with credibility and complete transparency a legitimate route to achieving carbon neutrality. I will be talking about PAS 2060 and the transition over to ISO 14068 in another episode. So businesses basically have two years to manage that transition. So we'll cover that off in another podcast in early 2024. So as I'm recording this, it's December 2023 and the new standard ISO 14068 Part 1 2023 has officially been published this week. So what is BS ISO 14068 Part 1 2023, a standard for businesses transitioning to net carbon zero? It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? (laughs) But it's the standard that actually specifies the requirements for achieving and demonstrating carbon neutrality through the quantification, reduction, removal and offsetting of greenhouse gas emissions. And who can use this standard? Well, this standard can be used by any organisation across the globe in both the private or public sectors. So any organisation ultimately that wishes to make the organisation or the product climate neutral. But products can be either consumer facing or business to businesses, and it can include all types of goods and services, including events and financial services. So why now? Well, climate change is the most urgent issue of our time. To avoid the worst effects and keep the rise in global temperatures to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change of eminent scientists has identified that we need to cut emissions of greenhouse gas emissions by 40% in this decade and to global net zero by 2050. However, working towards a long-term target of net zero can be difficult. We know that a lot of organisations are struggling with this. And without the recognition of achievements along the pathway, it could be quite demoralising. And also, I've recorded a previous podcast when we introduced the Net Zero Planner about Parkinson's Law, which is basically, it's about completing tasks in the time that you have to fill it. 
So if we're all given the target of 2050, there'll be many organisations that aren't actually taking it seriously until closer to the deadline. And they'll fill that time with different activities potentially, but not actually getting any meaningful results. That's where the carbon neutrality standard can help. Organisations that have a clear plan and they've started to make real greenhouse gas emissions reductions can counterbalance their unabated GHG emissions, which is their remaining carbon footprint, using high quality carbon credits, sometimes also known as carbon offsets, to achieve carbon neutrality. But it's interesting that this standard is also looking very closely at the removal of the GHG emissions, which will therefore reduce the cost of offsetting if that is what is left in terms of looking at the residual greenhouse gas emissions that are left. Organisations that are using the standard are going to benefit in two main ways, which is internally and externally. Internally, it's through having a clear guide on best practice to reach carbon neutrality. And externally, by demonstrating compliance with a rigorous standard on carbon neutrality. I'll also be explaining in a lot more detail about some of the other benefits in the next episode when I've got 10 reasons for adopting this standard. But for now, if we just look very, very briefly, there is some significant internal and external benefits. So how can the standard help businesses that are still scratching their heads about how to tackle climate change? Well, the standard provides clear principles that entities need to take into account when seeking carbon neutrality. These include establishing a hierarchy so that greenhouse gas emission reductions are made first and reductions are often the most cost-effective way of reducing a carbon footprint, therefore avoiding the need for potentially costly carbon credits. So this hierarchy is then used to determine a pathway to carbon neutrality including both short and long-term targets for minimising the carbon footprint. The standard also explains how the pathway is used in developing a detailed carbon neutrality management plan, which provides clear guidance for those responsible for the implementation of carbon neutrality. Now, early in the new year, we're going to be providing a podcast for you on how to implement ISO 14068. Because if you've listened to our other podcasts earlier this year and also in 2022, we provide you with guidance on the seven steps in carbonology, which is ultimately underpinned by ISO 14064, the Carbon Footprint Verification Standard, and also PAS 2060, the Carbon Neutrality Standard, which a PAS, for those of you that don't know, is a publicly available specification. And that's what we've adopted at Carbonology over the last year or so. But obviously now that will be superseded by ISO 14068. But I think one of the things that I'm most passionate about with this standard is it just provides complete transparency. I think one of the challenges that we're facing is that there is a lot of greenwashing going on. And this standard, as an international standard, can now help to combat that. Because as we've seen in recent years, there have been many claims of carbon neutrality that are unsubstantiated or supported only by purchasing a few carbon credits, with a consequent risk of greenwashing. By following this new standard, BS ISO 14068 Part 1, organisations will be able to demonstrate that their claim of carbon neutrality is underpinned by real action to reduce GHG emissions and includes a clear pathway to eliminate all possible GHG emissions. So it's not simply a case of just falling back on purchasing carbon credits in the market. So this significantly improves the credibility of a claim. Well, that's all from me in terms of an update on the new standard for now. But please do tune in for future episodes of the ISO show where we're going to be sharing more insights into the benefits and the reasons for implementing this particular standard and also how to achieve verification to this standard. I'm also going to be producing a podcast to explain the difference 
between certification and verification, if that's something that you're intrigued about. There is a very significant difference. It's all about verification for this standard, along with ISO 14064 on carbon footprint verification. So please do leave us with a comment and review and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future podcasts. So I look forward to catching up with you on the next ISO show. Looking to use ISO standards to drive better business practice? Contact us at blackmoorsuk.com to access further information and book your free 15-minute call.